On today's Idol Chat, I'm excited to get to know the actor, model and self-proclaimed petrol head, Kelvin Fletcher. Hi Kelvin, how are you? Hey Charlie. Nice to meet you, pal. Thanks for having me, mate. <laughs> it's okay. I feel privileged being sat on here. <laughs> so, 20 years in one job with Emmerdale, that must have been like leaving your family. Was it a hard decision to make? It was a really hard decision, yeah. Um, it probably took me two years to make that decision. Um, so, yeah, I, I obviously spoke with my family and my wife and a few close fr uh, friends. And, um, yeah, like you said, 20 years is a long time, so... Um, how old are you? 12? I'm 12, yeah. yeah. It's eight years, another eight years. Um, but no, and I think, you know, it's been... It wasn't a decision I took lightly, and it was no discredit to the show. It wasn't because I was unhappy or I wanted just a, a new challenge and I wanted to try something new, so... Uh, and they were great. ITV and Emmerdale were fantastic. They understood my decision and supported me every way. And, and, uh, and yeah, I guess it's with great thanks to them that they gave me the confidence and the belief that I wanted to do other things. So, so what do you miss, if anything? The people I miss. Um, I still speak to quite a few of them, you know, most, uh, most days. But, yeah, the people, that's the one thing uh, that Emmerdale certainly had was a real spirit of um, just a great place to work. You know, I was extremely lucky that when I was... You know, similar age to you, I was acting was my was my hobby. So that when somebody said, or I got the opportunity to do that as my job, day in day out, on a professional element in front of you know thousands, millions of people, it was a massive privilege for me, not a great opportunity. So, but the biggest thing about that place was just a, a great place to work. I came away, you know, we were having really tough scenes and funeral scenes and, and and quite sometimes morbid scenes and quite high emotional stuff. But you just have an absolute whale of a time doing it. So. The people are the biggest things that I miss about that place. Okay, so are you an unemployed actor on the dole now, or have you got another acting job? <laughs> um, currently, as it stands at the minute, I'm, I'm, I'm a jobbing actor, yeah. I think that's a better term than unemployed back, but yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, I, that is the weird thing about acting, is that, you know, I'll probably go in the next few weeks, months, possibly without without a job, and that was a risk I knew I was taking when I, when I left Emmerdale, but um, ultimately I didn't see it too much of a big risk because my contract with Emmerdale, like many of the cast, is only every year, you see. It's quite a short term, a year, two years, something like that. So I think one would be quite foolish to, to see more than that. Even though I was there for 20 years, I always just kind of worked to my contract. So in my eyes, I was only really risking a year's employment. So, And I'm confident and, and, and fully believe that I've got, you know, uh, I can do a job elsewhere. So uh, hopefully this will be the catalyst for me to, to go and get another job. In. And there's so much TV being produced at the minute, you know, with drama and different genres with comedy and whatnot so there's a there's certainly a few opportunities out there that I've been asked to do already and it's just about picking the, the right job for my next job. So would you recommend acting as a career to young people my age? Um, on the face of it it's, it's probably not a, when 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 someone says they're going to be an actor it's, there's no guarantees but then I guess there's not many guarantees with any job. If you're an extremely good bricklayer or an extremely good dentist or an extremely good hairdresser you're pretty much always going to find work and you're guaranteed work almost you know but you could be the best actor in the world and, and, and be unemployed. Um, a lot of my friends are fantastic actors and they're not currently doing anything acting-wise. So um, if my little daughter in years to come decides to be an actor, an actress, then, then yeah, I will be a little bit uh, nervous. But ultimately, you've got to go with your passion. And anyone of a creative mind, which that, you know, acting is, and um, you've kind of just got to follow your dreams. And uh, if you're fortunate enough to have something else on the sideline to keep you ticking over, then, then hopefully that's the ideal scenario, I think. So what advice would you give? Um, advice? Well, I started acting when I was about six or seven year old, I think. Uh, I went to my local uh, drama group. I grew up in Oldham and there was no real, uh, well, we certainly couldn't afford to go to proper drama school or anything like that, and there was nothing like that in the area anyway. So what there was was a privately run, but pretty cheap, just acting workshop where you went along and did little pantomimes and little plays and stuff like that. So. I, that was the first bit of advice that I give is find out your local drama group and you know and just go on uh, and go there. You don't necessarily have to want to be an actor. I used to run some voluntary t uh, acting classes that I used to teach at in Oldham, and that was not for kids to become actors. That was purely to, because I know as a kid myself at the time what what that gave me, what drama gave me, and that was a it makes you a lot socially more interactive with people. You meet people from different backgrounds. Uh, it, it brings out a lot of confidence. <laughs> a lot of actors are quite shy, so it's, it's quite nice to go there and you know you come out your shell and, and it really works on you, you, yourself as a character. So, in my old chat research, it says that you're also a model, but you didn't even make it into the top four of the sexiest males in the British Soap Award in 2007. <laughs> True. <laughs> Is that when you decided, I need to get down to the gym? Um, <laughs> 
I probably was actually. Yeah, you're right. There, yeah, <laughs> I, I've seen that. Is that on Wikipedia that model? You yeah. know, anyone can edit Wikipedia, don't you? You know, it's not always uh, not always very accurate. I but... mean, Google's a good thing. So <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, if, if I'm not, uh, I'm certainly yeah far from a model. I've done a few um, uh, shoots, I guess, but that's with a, my acting background. So. Um, no, my delve into keeping fit and training and going to the gym was, I've kind of always done that, I don't know, 16, 17. My schoolmates at the time, that's what they was doing. There was a couple of gyms opening up in our local area and allowing young 16, 17 year old lads in there. And we was like, yeah, we'll give it a go. And I always kind of played rugby league as a kid as well. So, um, so yeah, give it a go. And there was no conscious effort or reasoning. It was just a bit of a social thing. And like all young lads, you know, you want to, you want to get fit and, you see other older lads in the mid twenties made me think, oh yeah, you know, maybe get some bigger arms or whatever. But uh, <laughs> it just kind of progressed from there, and uh, and now it's just a great, you know, it's great for great for the mind, really. You, you know, you you feel good, look good. You just want to, you know, be the best you can be. So um, there's no, I'm not too obsessed with it. You know, don't get me wrong, but uh, I do try and get a couple of sessions a week in, yeah. Okay, so 2007 was that the year Ken Barlow from Curry won it? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. He's a good looking lad, actually, Ken, isn't he? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that the year I was nominated for it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I, I, yeah, I think most uh, most years the producer of the show of Emmerdale will put forward who he or she thinks is probably in with a chance of winning it. The sexy. Oh, the that, sexy. That is, that's so. Isn't it? Yeah, well, it, I'll, I just think it feels when they put you up for it, and you're thinking, I'm not going to win that. So the so the director gets an email. <clears throat> Uh, can you please put forward some of the, your sexiest actors? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll just put forward um, Kelvin. It gives my mugshot, yeah. And it exactly. I don't get through. <laughs> yeah, it does my, uh, does my, um, my self-esteem absolutely no favours, but <laughs> thanks for bringing that up anyway. It's all I was right. hoping that little bit on, on Wikipedia would be deleted. I'm going to have to edit it when I get on tonight. <laughs> OK, so, as always, I've been in touch with some of your close friends to see what they think of you. Let's see what Emma Dale's Danny Miller has to say. Charlie, how are you, pal? So, I've known the incredible Sulk, or Andy Sugden, or Suggers, or as you know him, Kelvin Fletcher. I've known him now for eight or nine years. Um, he's a very, very dear friend of mine. Very funny lad. Uh, and a rugby fan. Would you believe that, Charlie? Rather than a football fan. Each to their own, eh? <laughs> Looks well. Now, he's a good-looking lad, isn't he? <laughs> definitely. I think definitely. he might have best-looking, actually, Danny. <laughs> so there's one that's definitely going to miss you from Emmerdale. Um But rugby league over football, really? I know, yeah. Um, it's just I'm from Oldham, and Oldham is a really big rugby league hub, really. Um, obviously, there's a big uh, football uh, presence there as well. But yeah, for being a kid, uh, Oldham St Anne's was my lo local uh, rugby team, and uh, yeah, just I love the whole culture. I love what it's about. I love the people that play it, uh, the fans. Um, you can drink alcohol in, in a stadium in rugby league. You can't do that in football. There's so many different things you can do in rugby league that you can't do in, in football, unfortunately. But um, I just think the spirit of the game is, is what makes it, for me, you know, the best the best sport in the world without 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 shadow of a doubt. So what team do you support? Uh, that's a, quite a good question and, and one that I'm asked quite a lot in the rugby circles and I'm always reluctant to give an answer because I've got friends who play in, in various different teams. And as you know yourself, when you associate with one team, that's it then, you know, you yeah. can. And I go watching quite a few games in different teams. So if I'm in Salford, I watch Salford play. When I was doing Emmerdale, finishing work on a Friday, I go watching Leeds Rhinos play. So you get the Leeds Rhinos fans saying, oh, I thought you were a St. Ellen's fan, and you, you don't want to upset anyone. So because uh, I've got friends who play for different teams, I'm always um, at heart, I've got to kind of support everyone. But, but as a kid growing up, St. Ellen's. Okay, fair enough. One of my team. Yeah. Fair enough. So who are your favourite players? Favourite players? Um... Oh, much. I think yeah. When I was a kid growing up, there was a guy Paul Scorthorpe, who was uh, he was from he was from Oldham, uh, and he was just you know an amazing player. So he was certainly one who, who we all looked up to and, and thought he was amazing. Uh, Sean Long, I was always a big fan of his. Um, he was obviously another St. Helens player. Barry McDermott, again from Oldham, um, he was a great player at Leeds, at Leeds Rhinos when he was there. Um, but nowadays, I think um, I think the most exciting player. At the minute, um, who would I say? I really liked Rangi Chase. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's had a bit of a tough time of late, but um, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him as well. He's a you know a really nice guy. But that's the thing about rugby league players. I think I, I don't think I've met one yet who's not been, you know, a very humble and uh, you know a very impressive character. So uh, 
and obviously a few of my friends, one of which the, the Burgess boys, uh, you know, they're absolutely all, all on fire at the minute. I know Luke was over here playing for Salford for a few months for the playoffs, and uh, you know, and the twins and, and Sam, they're uh, they're genetically gifted because they're absolute big boys, aren't they? Yeah. And, uh, and they've got they've got the uh, you know the skill set to go with it as well. And then you know to kind of top all that, they've got you know a great uh, great characters as well. So again, just credit to the game. So. You played in a couple of rugby league testimonial matches. Who's the toughest player you've faced? The toughest player I've faced. Uh, I remember running the ball in. I think on, the, on a it was Scully's testimonial game. It was against Wakefield, and uh, I was obviously blatantly there as a non-professional rugby league player, mm -hmm. just more as a gimmick. And um, I think I just took the ball in, sat on my nerves, and I just got absolutely smashed. I think it was Ryan Atkins, who's a centre at Warrington now, and. Uh, so yeah, they're all obviously a lot bigger than me. When you said before about me training, I'm still only like I'm five foot eight and about 80, 81 kilo or something. So I'm I'm only quite quite uh, slender really compared to some of those guys. Um, but certainly the one player I wouldn't want to run up against is uh, was Barry McDermott in his day because you don't know whether you're going to get an elbow or a <laughs> or a shoulder in your face. So <laughs> while we're on rugby, let's see what England rugby league stars Tom and George Burgess have to say. Hey Charlie, what were we just here at dinner mate? Um, hey Charlie. Do you want to hear a few things about Kelvin? How long have you got? We, uh, we've known Kelvin for, what are we, 24 now? I've known him since we were 15, 9, nearly 10 years probably. Uh, we met him through rugby, a bit of a rugby Roy. He loves his rugby, he'll, uh, he'll tell you that. And he's um, obviously working on Emmerdale Farm in Yorkshire, close to us, so that's how we met. and. Um, We've been really good friends ever since. And Kelvin uh, met us and uh, you know, saw our close bonds as, as brothers. I think it's something that he related very closely back to his own family. And uh, you know, we, we gravitated towards each, each other as, as families. And uh, yeah, it's just it's been a good relationship since. And he's got a great ability of turning uh, social into a piss up. <laughs> got the water here, Kel. We're not having a piss up tonight. We're going to go meet you later, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Sorry about the language there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. You'll bleep that out, won't you? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, Tom and George Burgess are obviously good pals of yours, and they're definitely competitive. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Between the three of you, who would win in each of the following? Eating a bag of crisps? Tom. Okay. Chugging a pint the quickest? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that one. <laughs> no, no, to be fair. An arm wrestle? Me? Seriously? Seriously? Oh, yeah, I beat Gary Connolly once, and any rugby league fans will know that's an absolute feat in itself. He was absolutely blind, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was he a bit bladdered? Yeah, just a little bit. Fair enough. At last orders, a 50 metre sprint? Um, George. Okay. So, you do realise that I've just set you up for the next time you're out on the town with them? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, be sure to let me know who wins, and I'm sure Tom and George will tell me if it's them. Uh, whilst on sport, in between test matches in India, I also managed to get a hold of another one of your pals, Yorkshire and England cricketer, Johnny Bairstow. JB. Hi, Charlie. Uh, Kelvin and I first met, actually, uh, randomly in a bar in Leeds. Um, yeah, a random evening out, just with a few friends, just having a, uh, quite a few beers, and... Uh, and looked across the bar and um, there was Kelvin. I actually um, went over and introduced myself because uh, I'd played in a charity creek game with a friend of his, um, Tom Lister, who used to play Carl King in Emmerdale. So went over and then uh, and then there the, the friendship started. Um, and then from ever since we've, we've been good mates and, um, and the friendship continues now. I was a bit embarrassing when I first met Johnny because I wasn't a really big cricket fan and he was... Uh... He came over, he mentioned Tom Lister, he was like, I know a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, right, yeah, because he goes, I played in a cricket game with him. I said, yeah, well, Emmerdale have got a charity cricket uh, team. I says, if you ever want to you know, do any more games, I said, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get you in. And he was like, uh, oh. no, did I know he's absolute boy, I wonder, you know, at the Yorkshire and England cricketer. <laughs> and one of my mates, a really big cricket fan, I was telling him, he was like, Kelvin, Johnny Best, how thick can you be? So, completely my ignorance, but, um, but yeah. Absolutely great lad. Fair enough, not your sport. Uh, did I read somewhere that you're a national champion with the Chaddy Wild Sharks at inline hockey? What on earth's that? 
Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think of the things my mates say about <laughs> people who play uh, inline hockey or roller hockey. <laughs> it's not not for camera, really. Um, well, yeah, I've tried, I've tried more sports, you know, um, rugby league being the one, but it was a little bit too physical for me. And, uh, yeah, the, the thought of getting a black eye uh, on the many occasions that I did and, and, and breaking little things, uh, it always interrupted with filming. And I had to be, you know, back then when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, I was professionally engaged in contracts and what. So I, I had, a, you know, I had to adhere to those rules and engage with the contract. So I had to be, at Monday morning, if I turned up at, at Emmerdale or on set, whatever I was doing at the time, with a black eye, then... You know, I was, I, it, was a, it was an absolute no-no, so I still wanted to be out and competitive, so I, I took up roller hockey, which, looking back, is just as, as probably, if not more dangerous than, than rugby league was, but we had all our armour and everything, and uh, it was good, I was a pretty good skater, uh, and me and my brother joined this team, our local team, and it was, a, it was just like a bit of a whirlwind, I think over the last, uh, over the 18-month period, our team became national champions, we went over to Canada, beat the best Canadian team, and Sports like that are obviously derived from ice hockey. They've seen as always a, an American, you know, led. Uh, so for a, a little British team just outside of Oldham to come and you know and uh, come trumps really was was a massive achievement for us. Yeah. I asked Danny for another funny story. All right. Let's see what he said. Hey Charlie, ask Kelvin what he takes off at the end of the night every single time he goes out. It's usually about six o'clock in the morning in a bar in Leeds or Manchester. Well. <laughs> To be honest, wherever, just ask him. <laughs> well, drunken nights are becoming a bit of a yeah. common theme here, Kelvin. They are, so, yeah. So, what's he alluding to? He's alluding to there, yeah, just tops off shout, um, which is uh, it's. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it's come from, but a lot of the lads really have done it. Yeah, over the years we've done it um, as, as young lads going out as 18, 19 year old lads, uh, and then. Even of late now, I'm a, now a father, you know, I'm a married man, I should be a little bit more responsible, but there's an urge of when you've had a few beers, someone calls it, tops off, shout, boom, it's off, that's it. And you don't even have to be in shape, you know, some of my mates, have a, they'll prefer a pie over to a to his protein <laughs> shake and, and their tops are off as well, so uh, it's just about, I don't know, I think I think if you was being the actor that I am, if I was to look at it as to why I do that, I guess, uh, I don't know, one likes to just let all his inhibitions go and, and just, yeah. <laughs> Get naked. <laughs> <laughs> oh but obviously God. the bar manager's like, can you not do that again, please? So, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not always uh, most welcomed. OK, so I also asked Danny if he had a special memory of your time as friends. Charlie, I know I was taking the mick out of Kelvin there, but genuinely is one of my dearest, dearest friends. Um, and uh, I couldn't finish without telling you a little story about myself and Kelvin. Um, we took my dad um, to Barcelona a couple of years ago for a weekend and uh, my dad's a huge, huge fan of Kelvin, and rightly so. Uh, not necessarily just because of Emmerdale, but, you know, because he's a great man and a, a great role model, uh, particularly has been for me as well. Um, so um, he's a fan of him just purely for that, and uh, vice versa, I think it's fair to say Kelvin's a fan of my dad. Um, so we went on the weekend away um, to Barcelona, and uh, I remember being in the club at 6 o'clock in the morning, and... Uh, I turned round and I was the drunkest one in the club, let alone the party that we were in. And I saw Kelvin dancing with my dad, and my dad dancing with Kelvin. And I thought, I'm the youngest one here, and I'm the drunkest one here. But it was more so the smile on my dad's face that Kelvin put on his face that day. He was just, he was just mesmerised and um, enjoyed every single minute of it. I'll never forget that face. Um, and it still remains as my dad's favourite ever holiday. And you know, he's 82, so he's been on a lot of holidays. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to finish on that and just say that. Uh, you know, seriously and, and deep down, Calvin is uh, one of my dearest friends and uh, I miss him a lot here at Emmerdale and uh, I wish him all the best for the BTCC and everything else he's got going on in his life with uh, Liz and Marnie and his new little family. Um, I wish him nothing but luck in the future. And um, and yeah, there you go, a little bit deep, but uh, but yeah, I thought I'd finish with a nice note. So uh, all the best for that, Calvin, and lots of luck for the future for you too, Charlie. All the best, mate. Take care. Cheers, Bob. That was a bit deep, that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah but I mean... a bit emotional, then. Obviously. Like, this is your life. <laughs> obviously, it's a great friend there, and a very nice memory for him, and obviously you two. Um, so, you've recently have started a family with wife Liz and daughter Marnie. How's that going so far? Good, very good, yeah. It's uh, everything I hoped it would be, and, you know, and more. The old cliche, but, yeah, it's amazing. It's uh, just amazing. It's a big smile on my face every time I think I'm, you know, so... So, what are you most enjoying about being a dad? I think the best thing about being a dad for me is, is, is and it'll continue throughout the years, is to 
you know, I'm, I'm bringing somebody up. I'm responsible for their for their well-being, but um, I'm going to try and implement all, hopefully my best qualities and and give that little person the best outlook on life. And uh, you know, I want her to be to become a a, a young lady of, of great character. You know, regardless of what she does with her life, career-wise or anything like that. Then I think for me, the ultimate challenge, the ultimate goal is just to be a uh, as corny as it sounds, but a really good <laughs> good person. You know what I mean? So if I, I'm going to be play a vital role in that, me and and my wife, and my friends, and my family. So that's uh, that's the challenge, and that's one that I'll fully embrace, and, and I think I'll hopefully I'll do a good job. So I'm from a big family of six, and I know it might be a bit deep right now, but how many more children would you like? You're probably best off asking my wife that question, really. Mm. Because, uh, <laughs> I want have you got said, a phone number? Yeah, you think we could get around? Have you not already got it? Uh, well, I haven't now. <laughs> I once said, uh, somebody asked me this question at work, when I was at Emily, one of the girls, and she went, Kelvin, um, how many children do you want? And I said, uh, probably quite naive. I went, I'd, I'd love to have five children. I've always thought five would be a really good number. And then she said, well, it'd be quite hard with transport because obviously you need to get a bigger car. And then she reminded me that it's not just me that has to deliver these babies. So uh, I've probably spoken a little <laughs> bit too soon. So yeah, I've, got, I've got the easy job, I think, because men, you know, just uh, being, being, uh, being there for the actual... Uh, conceiving bit. Let's not, let's not go over too <laughs> yeah. big. Five, anyway, five is a magic number. We are a, we are a PG channel, uh, just before we do anything, but... It's like a biology class. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but let's see what else Johnny had to say from on tour in India. Charlie, having got to know Kelvin, it, uh, it'd be remiss of me not to, to mention, I think, having spent 20 years on a, a television soap um, and, and being so successful, I think it just shows... Uh, what a great guy he is, hard working and, um, and yeah, if it had uh, been on a TV programme that nobody had watched then it would have been fine but uh, all the people in Yorkshire, all the people all over uh, England, uh, he's a very familiar face now so so yeah, I hope uh, everything goes as well with his uh, racing career as it did with uh, with, with Emmerdale and, and I'm sure there's many, many more things we'll see his uh, ugly face on in the future. Well, what a nice guy, stating nice the guy, obvious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a nice one to a video as well over in over in India at the minute as well. Definitely. So yeah. So they're doing quite well. Yeah. But both him and Danny have mentioned your new career from actor to racing cars. How'd that happen? Um, yeah, I'd be so, yeah, it's a new career as such, but um, it kind of all happened by accident, really, and then it quickly <laughs> snowballed into something that's become quite serious and and, and labelled as as another career. Um, 2012, always been a as you as you were alluded to in your introduction at self. Uh, Self-proclaimed uh, petrol head, you know. So uh, yeah, I am, you know, I'm a massive car nut. I remember, you know, the top trump cards that we used to have, and I was always yeah. one who knew the brake horse power, brake horse per ton, not to sixty time top speed. Uh, even how many newton meters of torque the car had, I was an absolute obsessed geek. What are you on about? Yeah. What are you on about? <laughs> Just like that. No, ge genuinely, I haven't got a clue what you're on it's about. Probably Colin. like you with football. Yeah. No, I, was, I was obsessed with cars, so for me. Um, but I never, never raced cars, never did go-kart or anything like that. I was an actor, I was, I was doing Emmerdale. And then uh, in 2012, I was 28 and was at a motor show that we went to every year. And there was a little advert with a, an actual little classic Mini. Uh, and my dad bought me a Mini when I was 12. Uh, we put it in the garage and I used to just tinker with it most nights. So I'd come home from school and I used, you know, I used to just teach myself, take the carburetor off, put it back on, take the mm -hmm. wheel off, put the change the uh, brake drum, you know, everything like that. So... Uh, and we just, it was a bit, a little bit of reminiscing, really, um, and the novelty was there. And then there's an advert saying you could go racing, you know, pretty much a, a classic mini, a bit of a price breakdown. It was within our, within our budget, and um, it would be probably what people spend on a new set of irons and a couple of drivers and a membership at a, a golf club was pretty much what it was going to cost to go racing for a year because motorsport is pretty expensive. So we did it. I bought a little mini. I had a trailer, went to Walton Park, did a track day. Signed up to the thing. He went and did my hours test. I had a medical, and I was officially, a, you know, I had a national B racing license. Wow! And uh, and that was it. I was qualified pole, fastest lap. Won the I ended up winning the championship, but you know, a year later, and that was the catalyst. Then that was I got approached then by some bigger teams and bigger sponsors. And yeah, I think four years down the line, I was racing. Well, this year I was racing in the British Touring Car, which is you know the pinnacle of domestic motorsport. So I, I was kind of proud. I've come a long way, and. Uh, but yeah, I'd not left Emmerdale to just to solely concentrate on that. Yeah. It does give me more time to concentrate on that. But obviously, first and foremost is, is my acting career, and and uh, thankfully the racing career has, has kind of you know worked quite quite nice next to it with a, you know a nice little bit of synergy because ITV4 televised all the BTCC events, so uh, and that was 
quite cool to keep it under the, the ITV umbrella. Yeah, so I know you did a pretty good job in your first couple of years racing Porsches. Uh, three wins and 11 podiums. You must be proud of that. Yeah, it, it, it was a it was a great uh, result, but I was still the effect of the club racing there. You know, w with no disrespect to, to the people I was racing against, it was a certain level, and <clears throat> I was used to winning quite a bit. <clears throat> it was a big step up for me. I'd gone from racing a sixty brake horse classic mini, so in, in, <laughs> without being too technical, that's like literally you know a really slow, really slow car. It's like playing Sunday League and then going having a game, probably in the championship or something like that. That's difficult. It's you know that's so difficult. so that that would jump straight in the deep end, and then the year after I went straight into the Premiership, if you like. So that's that's that was a kind of uh, the, the steps I was taking. So and obviously as you progress up, the talent gets better, the teams get better. Drivers are more prepared. They've been doing it longer. You know, I was still these kids that I've been racing against. We've been racing for 20 years, as long as I've been acting. You know, from go karts and, and whatnot. So uh, I was in a completely different realm of talent, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why my results was was great when I was with other club racers. But when I was up against 31 pro professional drivers, which I'm up against this year, then you know I've only had quite a, you know quite a few top 20 finishes. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but again, that's an achievement in itself. And and my pace throughout the year has shown that I'm, you know, consistently a top 15 driver, really. So, uh, fingers crossed, in the, in, you know, next year um, we can we can build on that for that. So, how did you get a ride in the British Touring Car Championship with Power Max Racing? Uh, that came about at the beginning of this year. They approached me and said they'd, uh, I think their driver had gone to a, a factory team, a works team, <clears throat> and they had a spare drive. Um, and I thought it was one way out of my budget for what my sponsors were willing to to you know commit to and two uh, it was a bit too much of a challenge for me you know I've been racing three years at that point uh, to race in a British touring car is a dream come true but way too way too soon I wasn't nowhere near experienced enough and I've always been confident I had the talent you know um, and, and almost like um, a little nurtured really something that need, needed to bit of work on it but the talent was certainly there and I was confident in that and it, I just I just lacked you know practice I was I lacked the experience and once that came then I, I was confident I could certainly do a good job but sometimes opportunities life you know they come at a time when you least expect them and you sometimes got to you know take a leap of faith and, and back yourself really um, and I did it and naturally my sponsors were, were, were delighted and made up because it's a huge platform for them it's national TV national coverage live TV mm -hmm. 50,000 spectators each around you know it's, it's a massive event and uh, so the exposure is huge so commercially it's obviously very viable and then with me being an actor on TV, uh, you know the the team bought into that. They they recognised that. Um, so yeah, I was, I was pretty. I was gifted a drive really because of my my profile, um, mm -hmm. and I had a, quite a good few results as well. So I think the team were confident that I could at least do a job. You know, so uh, I went there with a bit of pressure on me. And the first time I drove the car, this was quite late on in the year, in the racing year really, <clears throat> um, was the first round. So people have been testing all over the winter period. Whereas I didn't have that luxury because the late the deal was done so late. So I turned up at, in front of 45,000 people at Brands Hatch at the first race of the year. And free practice one was the first time I drove that car. You know, so... Uh, oh, Kelvin. Yeah. Where did you finish? I finished, uh, I think I finished 24th. 24th. Not bad 25th, for your first car drive, is it? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was tough though, you know. And I'm racing against people I grew up watching, you know, Gordon Shed and Jason Plato. Yeah. Matt Neal, some absolute legends of uh, of the sport, and and they are what they are professional racing drivers. You know, Monday to Friday, that's what they do. So, Monday to Friday, I was playing a character called Andy Sugden, and then at weekends, I was racing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty tough. Kelvin Fletcher, a man that's gone from tinkering with minis to racing in the equivalent of the Premier League in car terms. That's fair enough. Um, nice so, to put that. I'm, so, I'm going to nick that from my bio. <laughs> a man that's gone from playing Sunday League <laughs> yeah. to the Premier League. There we go. Um, so we have oh, a picture of you with your car. What type is it? So that's a Chevrolet Cruze, that. So the, the British touring car <clears throat> predominantly is saloon car racing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes it accessible. So back when it started, when it was Cavaliers and, uh, and, and Mondeos and stuff like that, was, was certainly what my dad has a car. So Monday to Friday, my dad would go to work in his Vauxhall Cavalier. And at weekends, as a family, we'd sit and watch TV and see that same Cavalier tuned up with a racing engine, albeit, yeah. but that Cavalier going racing. So that was the amazing, fascinating thing about it. You might have had one crash you didn't own up to. Watch this. Oh, I know. Stitch you up there. Right, so um, you're only hear an embarrassing moment about Kelvin. 
Well, it's, uh, it's a bit hard really because Kelvin doesn't get embarrassed too much about too many things because he's a confident guy. Yeah. He does like to call himself a race car driver. But yeah, well, the weekend we went away uh, up on a farm in Australia and we were driving uh, quad bikes around and you know he fancies himself pretty confident behind uh, four wheels or any wheels given that and he, um, I think he got a bit too cocky. Yeah, well, within a few hours he'd brought, he'd brought the, whole, the whole quad off and that was it, he'd crashed into a fence. Rolled and, uh, it into yeah. a fence. Just going, trying to go too fast, wasn't he? And just could he not was, handle uh, the speed. He was so embarrassed, he didn't tell anyone about it. And uh, tried hiding it behind a tree. And then uh, later on told us, uh, and yeah, found out later on that the, uh, the, the, the vehicle had to get brought off and... Uh, stick, no. stick to acting, mate. Yeah, stick to acting. So, who did the quad belong to? Um. Rather not say, yeah. Somebody quite well known. Okay. In fact, you've got a look of him there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so now it's out, tell me your version. Um, my version was, um, yeah, we'd been staying um, on, 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 Rusty's, uh, on Rusty's farm. Russell's farm. Just let it out, just let it out. Who is it? Yeah, Russell Crowe. Uh, Russell Crowe, okay. Yeah, and, yeah just, uh, just had a few beers and then drove this quad bike back and lost control. I just went around the corner and it just kind of went up on its side and... You know, it happens. Uh, and Senna crashed. Uh, Damon Hill, Nigel Mansell, all the best. Colin McRae, they've all they've all crashed. Though there's no there's no shame in that. But yeah, it was pretty embarrassing and uh, one that I was. Uh, I'm hoping I will forget and be erased from my memory. But you obviously brought it back up and uh, with the fine detail as well. To be fair though, it's not really a good story for an up and coming racing car driver, is it? Well, it's not a good story for an up and coming actor either. When it's to when, be you're, fair. when you're writing off Russell Crowe's uh, quad bike, yeah. So it's certainly. Stop me getting any potential uh, Hollywood film parts there. Um, but he, he was absolutely great about it, and, and, and I, I think he saw the funny side. But um, as a racing driver, it's not good. Thankfully, I wasn't injured too bad. I think I've maybe busted a rib or something like that. But um, yeah, it's just to show that when you're on uh, when you're on holiday, and you maybe had a couple of beers driving a quad bike, it's not a thing to do. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to track down the owner, and he sent this short message for you. <laughs> my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. <laughs> Here, take this. You might need it when Maximus shows up. Um, <laughs> well, Kelvin, thanks for taking some time for some idle chat, and I can see why your friends speak so highly of you, as you're a top bloke, brave to a career change. And I look forward to interviewing you again in five years when hopefully you've secured a ride in the Formula One. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Charlie.